Some time ago, I was reading a book about ancient Maya astronomy. How they observed and tracked the sun and the moon, the planets and the stars. How they recorded everything and wrote it down in books and carved into stone. And even how they predicted eclipses. And I began to wonder if there had been an eclipse at a Maya pyramid in modern times. If there were any photos or film of someone observing an eclipse from a pyramid. I looked up maps of the eclipses of the past 200 years to see if any had crossed over the Yucatan Peninsula. No. 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 Almost. Yes. On September 10th, 1923, a total solar eclipse passed directly over Campeche in the Maya heartland. And what's remarkable is that it would have passed right over Edzna. Archaeologists know that that's one of the cities where the ancient Maya predicted eclipses. But there were a few problems. Even to this day, Campeche is one of the least populated states in all of Mexico, with less than a million people, and most of them living on the coast. In fact, a scientific bulletin from that time advised against going to Campeche because of the humidity, cloud cover, and thick, impenetrable forest. And indeed, the ancient cities of Campeche would have been completely overgrown in that time. And although the locals knew about the ruins of Edzna, and had been trying to tell archaeologists and government officials for decades, distractions such as other restoration projects, and the ten years of chaos of the Mexican Revolution prevented archaeologists from reaching the site until 1927, years after the eclipse had occurred. But amazingly, almost exactly a hundred years later, there would be a second chance. On October 14th, 2023, another eclipse would pass right over Campeche on almost exactly the same path right over the ancient city of Edzna. And this time the government officials and archaeologists were prepared and set up an eclipse committee, announcing that there would be a grand ceremony in Edzna on that day. I took one look at the images from the press conference where they announced this, and I knew I had to see it. But before I tell you more about the ceremony, let me tell you about the ancient city itself. Edzna comes from Itzana, which means the house of the Itza. Edzna was first settled in the pre-classic period, around the year 600 BC, and it flourished during the classic period, from 300 to 900 AD. It waned and shrank in the post-classic period, and it seems that some people still live there in the post-classic up until the arrival of the Spanish in the 1500s, at which point it was abandoned and lost to the jungle. Edzna has many structures, including several grand plazas, many pyramids, a ball court, a round pyramid, well-preserved stucco masks of the sun god Kenicha Hau, one staircase on a pyramid decorated with relief carvings, and another staircase decorated with hieroglyphic inscriptions about important rulers and events in the city's history. There are some stones that have been placed in this doorway with some of the original red paint that would have decorated all of the buildings in the city. You can see a lot more over there and in some places here. These rounded structures that are sort of supports on the side of the pyramid holding up some of its weight are a totally unique architectural feature to the city of Edzna and so far they haven't been found in any other city. But by far the most impressive structure at Edzna is the grand platform, on top of which is a ceremonial plaza, the Pyramid of the Five Levels, and several other pyramids. A couple of decades ago there was a storm that caused the wall to collapse, and they began to dig to restore it to its original state, and they found evidence of giant stucco carvings here on both sides. They found the bases of what would have made the stucco carvings, and they found that it would have been 10 meters wide on each side, making it one of the largest stucco carvings in the Maya world. It may seem like a giant inanimate mass of stone, but one way to conceive of this place is that it was a machine. A machine that kept track of the heavenly bodies and kept track of time. You may be thinking to yourself, but a machine has moving parts and a machine needs someone to operate it. Well, this one did have moving parts because it's aligned to the heavenly bodies and it tracks their movement across the sky. As for the operator of the machine, that would have been the sacerdote in Spanish, the astronomer. It was the job of the astronomer to keep track of all of the movements of the heavenly bodies to know when the holidays should take place, to keep track of time and to perform religious rituals. You can see that this platform is aligned to the center of the Pyramid of the Five Levels. And on the other side, it forms a straight line 
that continues across the plaza to where those people are standing in the Nahachna, and through to the other side where there's another pyramid that hasn't been excavated yet. This is called the Nahachna, which means the great house, the big house. You can see why. Together with the main platform, this would have been used to help keep track of the sun and also the planet Venus. So that line goes perfectly down the plaza to here, into this gap, and that way, and there's a pyramid over there. In the 1990s, a scholar took measurements from this platform, measuring in that straight line. It was determined that looking through the gap in that building from this platform, the sun would appear to set in that gap somewhere around August 11th, August 13th. And that's very significant, because according to the Maya, that's the date when the world started. August 11th or 13th in the year 3114 BC. The sound of that bird was crazy. <laughs> so according to Maya mythology, the sun would have set on the day of creation in that position. So if that's a pyramid of the sun, this is a pyramid of the moon. And it's said that uh, some of the structures there track the moon in various phases of its movement across the sky. Here on top of the temple of the moon, there's a, a room with a bench, which is typical of Mayan architecture. And above is a tree, and there's some sort of large predatory birds that keep swooping out of it. <laughs> so that's an alignment towards the sun. But there's another alignment from this plaza over there. There's another pyramid that's hidden behind the trees called the Pyramid of the Witch. And that one marks the movement of the moon, because the moon also rises and sets in different places in the sky in a predictable pattern that changes day to day, but also year to year. And there's an 18 year cycle where the place where it rises and sets moves around in the sky. And from the central platform, if you look and the trees were cut down and you can see that pyramid, that marks the end of this cycle. So being able to track the sun and the moon from this platform, the Maya would have been able to predict eclipses. And they did. Most of the books that the Maya wrote were destroyed, but there are four that survived. One of them is known as the Madrid Codex, and there's a copy of it to be seen in the museum in Merida. And on a few pages of this book are what's called Maya Eclipse Tables. These were times that were predicted using a system like this where there might be an eclipse. And there probably was an eclipse somewhere on the planet Earth in the times that they predicted, but it wasn't always in this area. All the other buildings on the site, almost, are aligned towards the main temple, but this one is aligned towards the cardinal directions. Here you can see that this building is aligned north, south, east, and west. And we know that this alignment was important because that building is connected here to the main plaza by this sock bay, or ritual road, that's raised above the ground level of the plaza. And to understand why that's so impressive, we need to go to the west, specifically 891 kilometers to the west, which is about 553 miles. And despite that massive distance, if we look to the west of Edzna, we'll see a very important city that was in power when Edzna began to flourish in the early classic period, Teotihuacan. And over here is Teotihuacan, the largest and most impressive city built in ancient times in central Mexico, just outside of Mexico City. The alignment isn't perfect, but after all of those hundreds of kilometers and miles, this is only one-tenth of a degree of latitude off from Edzna. And here in Teotihuacan, if I take out my compass and I align it with this, the altar in the middle of this plaza, we find that it amazingly has exactly the same measurement as in Edzna. So this pyramid is pointing the same way as the Pyramid of the Five Levels in Edzna, and this one also has five levels. They're not sure exactly if it was supposed to be four or five because the, arch the archaeologist who was in charge of this, Batres, 
they say he botched the restoration, so we're not sure if that matches up. And here again, we see five levels. And the plazas have the same layout as the one in Edzna, with a grand altar in the middle in front of a pyramid and small pyramids on either side. Actually, this is a pattern that we see repeated over and over again throughout Teotihuacan. It's sort of the signature of the city. And it seems to be reproduced in Edzna. When they dug, they found evidence that this used to be a triadic group, which was a type of structure from the pre-classic era of Mayan architecture that had three pyramids arranged on a plaza. And then later on, it seems that this platform was added and filled in and created a new sort of structure with this extra staircase and these buildings here. This separates the, this plaza from the lower plaza. And we see that in Teotihuacan too. Was there a connection between Edzna and Teotihuacan? Nobody knows for sure. But there is one thing that does connect Teotihuacan to the Edzna eclipse, and that's this, an obsidian mirror. Teotihuacan became rich as a trading city because they controlled a supply of obsidian and were able to trade that all throughout Mesoamerica to the Zapotecs, to the Otomi, and to the Maya. Obsidian is a type of volcanic glass, and when it's broken, its edges are the sharpest substance known on the planet Earth. For this reason, it was often used to make knives. 22% of the obsidian from the classic period in Edzna comes from Teotihuacan. But obsidian could also be polished and used to make mirrors. These mirrors were considered sacred objects because their reflections were thought to be a portal into another world, but also because they could be used to redirect light. And it's long been thought that ancient Mesoamericans used them like a sort of lens to observe eclipses. So I bought an obsidian mirror at Teotihuacan and decided to take it with me to observe the eclipse in Edzna. I began my journey in Merida and headed south along the coast until I got to the city of Campeche. Campeche is the only walled fortified city in Mexico. The current set of walls was built to protect the city against French and English pirate attacks, which occurred rather frequently in the 1700s. There are several museums in Campeche which contain artifacts from various sites around the state. The first museum, called the Museum of Maya Architecture, is located inside the city walls in an old bastion. Inside it has information about the different architectural styles of the Maya throughout the Yucatan Peninsula, and it also contains numerous stela, or steles, from Edzna itself. These depict rulers of the city and have uh, information such as their names and the dates that they ruled. Next I decided to go to the State Archaeological Museum, which is located in a fort on top of a hill, just to the south of the city. Although this museum is small, it contains a lot of artifacts from all the various impressive archaeological sites throughout the state of Campeche. These include sculptures, pottery, written fragments, and the ornately crafted and beautiful jade burial masks which were found throughout the region. After taking in a beautiful sunset on the coast and getting some rest, I decided to head out to Edzna. October 14th, 2023, the day of the eclipse. There were way more people than I expected. More than 7,000 tickets were sold at the entrance, and seniors didn't even have to pay, so nobody counted them. It's thought that maybe 10,000 people came, and I think that's one of the largest events to take place at a pyramid in modern times. Dancers dressed in traditional Maya costumes greeted the people who entered. Shortly after I arrived, the ceremony began. They took their places on the pyramid and began to dance. It was so hot that I was having trouble just standing in the shade. I saw several people being taken away in ambulances from the heat. There was drumming, dancing. And the head of the dancers spoke to the crowd and kept repeating one phrase over and over again. Yom botik ketch kinichahau. Thank you, Lord Sun, kinichahau. It was incredibly hot, 
I sweat so much that it became difficult to film at some point to operate the camera. And the camera itself was overheating constantly, so I had to keep turning it off. I'm taking shelter between some pyramids now in the shade, but actually it's starting to get dark already. Uh, it's about 30% covered, I would say, right now. A weather system was moving in from the Gulf of Mexico, bringing with it a lot of clouds, and everyone was worried that this would obscure the eclipse. When the eclipse started, it finally started to cool down as well, made it a bit easier to move around. I went to the upper plaza and looked for a good place to observe the sun. There were lots of scientists there, including many from NASA, all with their telescopes set up in front of the Pyramid of the Five Levels. And then the eclipse started. Little by little, the sun began to be covered by the moon. It's difficult to describe the feeling of a crowd during an eclipse. It's a mix of wonder, awe, excitement, tranquility, and a strange connection to people you've never met before who are all there for the same reason as you. Everything became still and quiet, and when the time came, I was able to film the eclipse through the obsidian mirror from Teotihuacan. So, in ancient times, if people used these mirrors to observe eclipses, this is what they would have seen. When observing an eclipse, you should only use proper certified eclipse glasses. I'd like to thank the dancers, most of all, because they made it a magical experience, and one I'll never forget, Yombotik Ketch. I couldn't find their names anywhere, or the name of the group they were in. If anyone knows, please write it in the comments below, so I can add it to the description of the video. Also thanks to the organizers and the Eclipse Committee of Campeche, and everyone else who made this event possible. It's something I'll never forget. If you'd like to know more about Edzna, check out my friend Robert Bido on the channel Mexico Unexplained. If you'd like to know more about the Maya and pyramids related to the sun, check out my video about Izamal. So that was it for Pyramid Review from the city of Edzna in Campeche. I'd like to thank my patrons, and if you'd like to support this channel, please consider subscribing and check out my Patreon. Thank you.